How you doing today, guys? I got an 87 T-Bird I got in a lot with these other models. They were, there were several of them, and they were really bad glue bombs. And I mean, seriousness. Yeah, once they do the windows, then they're about destroyed. But I haven't done this one yet because it's so classy. Oh my. <laughs> but I I took this T-Bird as far as I'm going to do it. The headlights are still really fouled up. Let me see if I can get it better like that. There we go. He didn't cheese up the windows too much. And it was all molded in red. And he put it together, and the wheels on it were horrifying. So I found some from my box that I know I'll never use because they're dubs. And they fit the wheel well arches really well in this particular car. But I was kind of surprised that it had a four-cylinder in it. And I needed a four to cut the hood off my MGB. To cut the hood off my MGB curbside. I'm going to cut the hood off even though I had already built it. And uh, I didn't like how high it sat. It, uh, I had to pull the wheels and suspension and everything off of it. And then I took the motor from the T-Bird and I reworked it into exactly what my, my MGB was. Let's see if I can get it up close to the camera. There we go. Adjust the lighting. There we go. I put a Weber carburetor on it. I took the two SUs off. And then it had a stock yellow fan on it. And then I put a chrome um, valve cover on it. And then I also did an anodized red Moroso cap I put on the oil where to do the oil fill in the front. But it's got a lot, it's got a long ways to go, but the engine is done right. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah, a little bit of cat hair on it. The engine is done right. Now I get to go through and paint the rest of it. But yeah, it was just a curbside. And I knew it, since I own the car, it was the exact replica of my car. I couldn't just leave it as a curbside. I'd have to do this, but when I ran into that yesterday and then uh, repainted, I repainted that, I think, back uh, about January, sometime like that. And I had it color sanded and ready to be buffed, but I just didn't have it in me to buff it because. You had the ability. You just didn't have the energy. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have the energy didn't for that. I have the interest. I have the interest. Oh, and that's just, I'm. I'm kind of a Ford guy, more of a Mercury guy. If you put a sharp point on it, I'm a Mercury guy from 1968 Cougars to to the uh, 71 Cyclone Spoiler. Those couple years and those few cars. So I'd be more of a Mercury guy than anything. But an 87 T-Bird just does not fit in with, especially with as bad as that thing was. That thing was approached. So I shot it a color that comes on um, comes on a couple T birds. I had a buddy. He had he had a T bird. It was DC, which is Mocha DC color code for his T bird. But yeah, it wasn't quite that new. His was more like maybe a '82, something like that. But I figured I'd shoot it on there and make it better. Than what it was and then now it can go on my shelf and i brush painted the interior black with some of tammy's apple barrel paint i didn't <laughs> i didn't get real heavy duty with anything on this car because yeah i think i even lost interest painting the bottom of it i sure did even lost interest with that as minimal as that is but I had to switch over the wheels because they had some 
cool looking wheels. They were just way too small for those wheel wells. I don't know if, I guess they would have came with the kit, but I can't imagine. They look like center lines, but they look more like 14s. They, they just looked horrible and out of scale with the car. And these that were in the box, I would have never used them on anything else. So I went ahead and I put them on here and it, I'm going to squirrel this away somewhere. <laughs> I'll have to figure out something too with those headlights. Those are it was a little foggy. <laughs> <laughs> foggy and red, uh, red plastic bleeding through them from where he hosed the glue on. Uh, oh, I know what that is. You hit a deer with it and it's blood. <laughs> there you go. The deer's inside, or the deer blood's inside the headlights. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to have to brush paint them white or do something. Maybe, maybe chrome pen, chrome Molotov pen. Would, anything would be better than all that mess. And they don't come out. The same thing with all the windows. They would not come out for me to paint that car. So, yeah. So I'm taking it that glue causes warping of plastic? Yes, and even the roof. He used, uh, I think, a full tube. So it, it worked oh. the roof really nice and the trunk. Oh. And I didn't bother to do all the body work to fix that either. Maybe Be a little kid did it. Before I paint it. No, he, he was a, a nice enough fella. He wrote a letter. He says, he says, uh, it was so nice of you to buy this lot. I'm sending this extra model, which was this one, this Camaro, that I painted in the color of that, of that Camaro. Well, okay, I guess. Down. Okay, let's turn him off because. No, there we go. He's going to bang into it. But this is a lot like the color that was on that. Well, you know what? I guess I did put some red in that other one on the T-Bird, so it's not a perfect. They're a little, they're a shade off from each other, I think. One looks like a bronze. The T-Bird looks bronze to me. Okay. And the other one looks a bit more has more red in it. More red. Okay. Put that guy inside. I like both the colors, though. He sent me this one, which I wanted to build into that car that I almost had back in 87. And uh, so I was kind of excited. That was the first one I built out of that whole lot. I had several models. And then he also sent me that 132nd scale. I didn't think I'd be able to work on or do anything with it. And then here I put that in that group build. Let me move this back just a hair, kind of center on. And I use that 132nd 68 Firebird for the group build. So that was one. And this pickup was another one. But yeah, that is so terrible. It's like, oh my goodness. It's going to build with that when you can't get the windows out. Look at the window. You oh. can't get them out when they use a tube of glue to put them in. The model is pretty much ruined. You, you really can use it to your advantage, though. Oh, yeah. The diorama out of it. Yep. And I've made rat rods out of stuff like that. I've done that kind of stuff a million times, but you can't make something nice, a nice looking shelf display model out of something. Like, well, you can if it's a rat rod. Could rat rod it. I like the color purple. I'm probably going to have to rat rod it. Yeah, he did a beautiful color purple. I think it was that Boyd's. Uh, hard to tell what that is. It was pretty once upon a time, but he didn't do it good enough for me to be able to just clear it and say, yay, we got it. But <laughs> I'll bet I can mix a color close to that. Okay, I guess I've got all that stuff going, and I guess I wanted to show you this, too. This was out there. This was not in that lot. This Hi, was... Dog. How you doing, Mad Dog, Merv? Great. Now I need to get me a Thunderbird. Oh, well, good. <laughs> it, it turned out as good as that one will ever be. My dad loved Thunderbirds, but he the did. old ones, not the 80s ones. <laughs> yeah, 80s anything I found is, you know... It's not real smart to try to restore an 80s anything. 
because the 80s were awesome for music. Music, movies. Fashion. Fashion. Just about everything except for cars and riding lawnmowers. Those were just pushed aside. They were trying to go too much computerized stuff, and they really didn't have that nailed yet. And it's just real funky, everything about them. You know what I thought was silly was uh, when... Car accessories with neon pink and neon green. In the 80s. <laughs> Boy, I was sure glad that fad died out. And then you see everybody wearing neon green now. High visibility, they call it. It was called neon back in the 80s. Yeah. Well, I had fashion stuff that was like that. Like earrings? Like Madonna style. <laughs> hey, there's Ed. There he is. Hi, Ed. Recovery? He says, amazing recovery, guy. Love the four-cylinder. Good call opening curb sign. Yes. Yeah, because being a car, being a car that I had, I always I always put them in a nice display box and everything. I've I've got a, like three or four others I need to get them boxes for, but they're too high. But this one here, I would really regret it with it being too high up in the air and then without an engine in it. It just it was just rubbing me the wrong way. This thing's got to be taken all the way to exactly like what my car looked like. Or else I won't be happy with it. And I wasn't. I was looking at it like, man, that thing looks like a 4 by 4 pickup truck way up in the air. <laughs> so I ripped the wheels and suspension out of it. There really is no way to modify it either. So I'm going to have to probably put a sprue in between the wheels and put it up, up in the air myself. Stick, uh, lower it down with doing that. And that works out good, too. And then just kind of glue other stuff to it, <laughs> like A-arms and things, and make it look kind of kind of good. But, oh, boy, yeah, it's beautiful here. It's it's almost 80 degrees. Sunny. And Tammy has the air set on frozen tundra, so. I'm like my dad. <clears throat> I need it freezing cold when it's above 70. Well, I just have my hoodie on, and now I'm stripping everything off because... I don't, uh, know. I don't know. The, <laughs> no, but uh, when the camera starts rolling, I start sweating. So it's one of those deals. I don't care how cold it is in here; it's not going to be not going to be cold enough for me. Um, Ed says, "Yeah, I do the screw thing too." Yeah, a lot of times to keep the wheels straighter, like even with the T-bird, I pulled those other wheels off and I used a sprue on them, and then I drilled in. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, Mad Dog says, did you see that video I did back in September or October about that MG Midget Barn find that my friend has in a rather large shed? I'm going to have to take a look at that. Oh, I, I, I didn't see it, though, I don't think. But I will I will go and look at it. MG stuff, I, I like the old MGTDs, except for I wasn't real happy that they didn't have spokes because I would put spokes on that thing immediately. I've got a set of spokes in there now. I had Dayton make for like fifteen, sixteen hundred bucks for my I was gonna build a Ferris Bueller day off Ferrari. So I had them make me a really nice set of twisted spokes, deep ditch in the front and killer deep dish in the back. And I've got some nice tires on them. But yeah, I've got that in my in my closet right now. And I would love to put that on an MGB one of these days. But he says, Mad Dog says, I had an MGB as well. Mine was a 1969, but mine was the GT with the hard top and an aluminum hood. Excellent. Mine had the aluminum hood, this last MG. This last MG that I restored. It had the aluminum hood and it was a 1969. And I even got another MG and pulled the hard top off it, put the hard top on my car, and then pushed that other one out, out in the front yard, and it sold within an hour. The other one, it had a seized motor. When I pulled the hard top off, I unseized the engine and got it running and pushed it right out in the front yard and sold it that day for like 700 bucks. And it was rotted to the ground. It was an 80. It was the newest one you could buy. And yeah, it was really rotted. I've had a few really rotted ones. I think I've had five all together. But my 69 was the last one I really had. And when I restored it, 
can't really. It's, maybe I should put it up on the rotisserie. Yeah. Instead of just sitting and talking. Um, the 69, when I restored it, I found out that the Ferris Bueller car was. Let me back this up to this thing. There we go. When I found out that the Ferris Bueller's car started as an MGB, I was done restoring my 69 here. And I told my then wife, I said, well, now we got to go get another one because I'm not going to tear this one up. So I got one off of eBay. It was an 80 also, but it was rust free. And the guy had taken it apart and got ill and couldn't put it back together. So I got it all in pieces. I had to get a shipping company to ship it in pieces. And they weren't really happy about that. It took about four or five different shipping companies till I finally got one that, oh man, this thing's in pieces. But I sold a bunch of the MG stuff and then bought a bunch of the Ferrari, like emblems and things like that. And they're just so high. And I bought one Barani, Barani wire wheel that was, it was a work of art. It was from that era. And that was so unaffordable, I figured it would be the spare tire. So I went and I had Dayton make the four that went on the car. But yeah, I was... I was the MGB guy. I had a Volkswagen, known as the Volkswagen guy. He came to me for parts, and he said, yeah, you are the MGB guy for this whole area by Chicago. Good old days. <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago. Uh, yeah, so I think that's about that's about where we're at. Oh, the dog says, who makes that MG kit? I'll go take a look. You know what I should do? No, oh, this camera won't do it. I don't think. I was going to say, I wanted to show you guys what my model number looks like. Okay. Mad Dog, that's a Revell kit. I have it up on the wall in my model room, and I wanted to show everybody what the model room looks like now that it's done with all my model boxes on the walls, and it just looks perfect. But this camera's cord won't reach that far. Yeah, that one's the Ravel. But yeah, it's a curbside and I it didn't set right with me. It had to have that little four cylinder in it. Okay. Well, guys, I can't think of too much more that I need to go over. But uh yeah, I've had a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun talking with you guys and uh have a great day. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.